Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this weekly research seminar. I'm Jari Lütimäki from the Finnish Environment Institute, and I'm happy, happy to um, well, uh, invite uh, to introduce this, this uh, seminar for this afternoon. Um, we have five different uh, presentations today. Actually, um, first we will have um, Professor Eva Furman from the Finnish Environment Institute, who will introduce the expert panel on for sustainable development in Finland. And she will talk, talk about the mission and the purpose of this expert panel, what does it do, and uh, how, what kind of plans the panel will have for the coming um, year or so, and we, of course, wish to have lively discussion and uh, welcome all the questions you might have. Um, but maybe we save the questions after the presentations in order to keep the timetable um, as we have planned. We have one hour time today, but we can continue the discussions at least half an hour after the official program. Um, after Eva's presentation, we will have a, a special quest, guest uh, outside the Viikki Research community. Um, we have Katrina Sivonen from the um, University of Turku. She is also a member of the uh, expert panel. And she will introduce us with the um, just uh, just a few days ago published um, policy brief uh, document outlining the key paths to sustainability for Finland. And we have some, um, some of these uh, policy briefs of, or leaflets here. Unfortunately, these are only in Finnish, but we will have an English version uh, quite soon. Um, you can, maybe I can circulate a couple of these here. Okay. There you go. And after uh, Kat Katrina's presentation, maybe we can have time for a couple of questions. But then we have uh, three other uh, comments, commentary, uh, commentaries from uh, Luke, Syke and Helsus. Um, we have uh, Eija Pauta, research professor, who will comment on, on, on these uh, presentations and Anna Tuomisto from Helsus and uh, Paula Kivimaa from Syke. They will give uh, short comments based on their own expertise and for the presentation that, that we will have, have soon. But after that, we can have the real conversation. Well, all right, I'll give the floor to Eva and let's hear about the Finnish expert panel on sustainable development. I don't know how many of you were present when we started this, um, actual, this seminar series of, of Viki Sustainability uh, series uh, some time ago. And uh, it's good to see it keeps going. So as, as Jari mentioned, I'm going to talk about uh, the panel that we are having in Finland. And, and then Kati is going to continue with the... Uh, publication that we have and I would like to say this publication it's actually not policy brief for one particular uh, reason and that is that sustainability is not only for policy to make decisions but to all of us <laughs> but let's come back to that so uh, today panels of this type are becoming more and more uh, common in Finland but also everywhere in the world and also on global level because the policymakers are quite lost with the huge amount of very complex um, information, knowledge, understanding that they receive from the research community. And that's also the reason why CITRA uh, initiated in 2013 uh, the kind of 
panel of sustainable development. It was Citra's experiment. They wanted to see could a panel of this type uh, uh, support policy making in Finland, decision making in Finland for sustainable development. This one was very much targeted on the uh, uh, sustainable development commission that we have in Finland to support their work. But it, it also made policy briefs and other statements, organized workshops and, and was also benchmarking <coughs> the science policy interaction in, in Finland. Uh, the experimentation of CITRA took place quite a long while and only last year uh, we were able to formalize uh, the panel. Uh, it was transformed to Suke, Luke and Helsus uh, um, at the end of 2018 and it started to work then in 2019. Uh, the, the selection of the people to the panel was much more open. Um, different institutions were asked to uh, nominate members and from that um, 10 um, persons went, were then uh, selected for the panel. And here are the people, you might recognize some of them or no, I'll give you the names for you soon. Uh, the common um, thing is that everyone is quite uh, familiar with interdisciplinary research and also with science policy and so science society collaboration, but also somehow linked to sustainability research in their work. So we are representing different uh, research institutes, but also universities in Finland. Some are from north, some are south, some are east, some are west. And we also have different disciplines as background. So I would say we cover quite well um, and uh, so that's uh, how uh, we are formed. And our really mission is to uh, support, uh, give the scientific support, uh, but also uh, ethical viewpoints to societal discussion. So we maybe go a bit broader from the sustainability policy or sustainable development policy in Finland, but rather think of Finland as a society as a whole. And we are really um, trying to push a societal change that takes into account both the social as well as the environmental issues and especially integrate them and, and, and discuss these contradictory goals and contradictory situations, but also try to show the benefits from the, the, the co-benefits that come when you actually link the two because they are so connected with each other. And, and this kind of long-term thinking that is the role actually of, of science as a whole. Just to give you a brief, uh, short introduction to what the uh, sustainable development policy in, in uh, Finland is the framework for it. We have several ministries uh, involved in it, actually all the ministries, but those who have kind of clear leading roles are actually prime minister's office where we have the uh, home of the secretariat. Then is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that has the links to Europe, but especially to the United Nations and to the Agenda 2030. And then we have the Ministry of the Environment where actually it was initiated, the sustainable development work in Finland. In Finland, the commission that we have, which is led by the Prime Minister, is, is, has existed for the longest time in the, uh, in the world. There are some that have in been also for tens of years, but they have had periods of cuts. We have always had it for a long time. So there is uh, monitoring, uh, there is the parliament also today linked with it. Uh, then we have a um, committee for development policies and we have the committee for sustainable development. And then um, uh, yeah, then we have the youth um, 
Agenda, Agenda 2030 for Youth, which is very active and, and closely works together with the Commission. And then we have the expert panel that we are talking about. So it's quite uh, complicated, but it's also ambitious and works quite well. There's another dimension which links both with this policy framework but, uh, and, and Finland's policy, and, uh, but also I would say our work that we are aiming to do in this panel, and that is that um, Agenda 2030 is local, locally bound. Cities are doing a lot. Cities have direct connection to the United Nations. They are linking the cities that are moving towards. There is the na national level like Finland, there is the European level and there is the global level. But then we also have like regional ones where Finland is active like the Arctic and the Africa. Finland is now doing a new Africa um, strategy and, and we are pushing strongly to get actually that included um, the sustainability into that strongly. So today we are talking about the uh, journal <laughs> or the, the paper <laughs> publication that we have but it based is very much on the global analysis. The global analysis is called The Future is Now. That was a report that was written by uh, 15 scientists from different parts of the world and it was really mandated by all the uh, countries, member states of the United Nations. Uh, it was done in, in three, four years and it was finalized last September. And it introduces a certain kind of model that we totally uh, took as our basis for the Finnish analysis. So the first issue is that we are not able to proceed well with the sustainable development goals and with the agenda unless we are able to turn the negative direction in rising inequalities, biodiversity loss and climate change and the growing amount of waste because these, as well as all the other SDGs, are highly interlinked. So we are not able to make progress, for example, in labor, unless we are able to uh, succeed with the ecological parameters, and we are not able to tackle the climate change if we are not being able to somehow ensure the uh, rising inequality issue. So this picture shows very Clearly that they are, um, they are highly interconnected, but they are also connected in such a way that sometimes there are trade-offs and sometimes they are co-benefits. The blues are the co-benefits. The good thing is that they are more of blue than red, but the reds are the ones that need to be tackled beforehand. And the other thing here is that there's lots of white, we need more information. But the clue that comes from here, that's the basis for the report that Katrina is now going to tell you, is that we need to transform systems in our society instead of taking all the 17 and work on those. And we need to do that in a way where we combine uh, governance, um, economical, uh, individual, behavioral, and then science and, and technological uh, levers together to make them to push these six different uh, uh, elements or systems forward. So now I'll give the floor to Katrin and, and uh, we move on that way. Thank you. Please. Ah, Anna Tansu. So thank you Eva and it's really nice to be here and meet you all in this seminar and uh, then what uh, I'm going to talk about is mostly about uh, issues which are now in this uh, uh, leaflet and uh, which is the first publication of the uh, uh, sustainability uh, panel in Finland and uh, as you can see from here there is uh, three, these kind of uh, main points why 
this kind of uh, uh, why we have made this and why we have analyzed with help of this global report also Finnish situation and the first one is that uh, um, there is a common interest of everyone living in Finland as Eva said here earlier this is uh, not the policy brief uh, and uh, there is a reason that this is for every uh, all uh, Finnish people all people who are living in Finland or, or who are acting in, in Finland and uh, this has meaning from different perspectives uh, to all, all of them, all of us. So, and then uh, uh, there is a uh, need for, for main goals for a different kind of administrative uh, bodies, government uh, municipalities and also from the business for different companies. Uh, and then uh, this uh, uh, the kind of uh, transformation process uh, should be financially attractive for all uh, and then also feasible for all. So these are the reasons uh, why it is worth to think uh, and analyze Finnish situation with help of this global report. And uh, the sixth uh, path we have all also then of course here uh, and uh, instead of, uh, for instance, uh, 17 goals or, or other uh, forms to structure these uh, sustainability issues. And uh, um, the main reason why we, the, the, it is so is that uh, uh, more, the world is more interconnected nowadays. And it, it could be said also that this kind of interconnectedness has been somehow always, but it is more intensive nowadays uh, and uh, uh, also uh, these kind of experiments uh, how to reach uh, sustainable development has shown that uh, there is a need to focus in this uh, inter interlinkages of uh, different issues without this kind of focus it is uh, not possible to reach uh, this the transformation so uh, this is the reason why to uh, take these six systems or six paths. And now I go uh, these one by one. There is, uh, or if I take back to this, so there could be, I could say that there is first uh, four, this kind of uh, uh, spheres of different kind of activities in society. And then these uh, two last are the, somehow more this kind of, uh, form this kind of base for, for all of these, uh, these processes to, for this uh, transformation. So let's see. First we have uh, economy, which is this first uh, system now here. And uh, the idea is here also to uh, reach this transformation and uh, to stir different kind of financial activities. Um, for instance, uh, with help of taxation, or other this kind of mechanism uh, instead of uh, GDP, for instance, other measurement systems which they take uh, uh, in consideration or also, for instance, uh, nature in a better way, well-being of nature and human beings uh, and uh, uh, not only productivity of economy. And uh, then uh, uh, new kind of businesses, uh, um, ser service businesses, for instance, uh, could be a part of this uh, uh, different kind of repair, repair services that support long-term use of different kind of uh, human-made items. So these kind of uh, issues which are parts of uh, both uh, governance and then uh, economy, uh, also everyday life for, for individuals and, and uh, uh, societies and there is a role for science also to uh, research, for instance, the transparency of gas flows uh, from uh, uh, the uh, everywhere perspective. This uh, there is then consumption, which is quite obvious in in this context of economy. If we then take this following one, it's food and nutrition which combines really, really many different kind of issues together. So this is the idea also with these, these systems or paths that they, they are, their interlinkages are 
embedded in, in these uh, systems. And uh, so the, the bus business sector is, uh, of course, uh, here important together with uh, different uh, ministries and ministries for foreign affairs, uh, for instance, in Finland, because these uh, uh, chains, uh, uh, food chains, uh, have a quite uh, strongly global level. So Finnish, uh, uh, for instance, Finnish individuals and communities, uh, where when we eat, uh, every day, so it has a global impact. And then, of course, public food, food services uh, in Finland, for instance, in schools, and uh, uh, so far, they have a quite big uh, impact in, in this question. What could be then done is vegetarian food production more uh, to Im improve it and uh, ecological sustainability in this way and uh, reducing food waste so uh, on all levels. So there is uh, both uh, in business, in everyday life, and then of course research of uh, impacts of food and food production is needed. Uh, from the gov governance point of view, it is, uh, for instance, this uh, public procurement of different kind of uh, food services. Energy uh, is then the third one here, uh, and uh, also, of course, really this kind of interlinked issue. Um, and fin Finland has really ambitious goals here now in, in the governmental uh, program, and also is a pioneer in energy transformation. But uh, then, of course, uh, uh, with our lifestyle here, there is uh, quite a high, uh, we are responsible for uh, a high amount of emissions also. So a different kind of uh, subsidy mechanism can steer energy production, different kind of investments, and uh, here also then all of these four um, actor groups ha have a role for uh, subsidies for, for sustainable energy solutions from go governments. <coughs> Governance point of view, um, pricing of uh, different energy services from a business point of view, and then individuals and communities here uh, have a role uh, with, uh, for with, um, decreasing of carbon footprint of in consumption, in transport, in uh, housing, and uh, in uh, also might be in eating. So these are these are interlinked also. Uh, uh, these six paths with each other. So, so with, uh, for instance, energy issues uh, are interlinked with food issues and so far. And then, uh, uh, for instance, from science and technology point of view, technologies for carbon storage can be here one uh, important issue. Then this fourth uh, is urban and peri urban areas. And it, is, uh, it, it could be uh, asked that why, why rural areas are not included here. The, the reason here behind, as I understand it, uh, is that uh, uh, the megatrend for urbanization is so strong that it must be uh, taken in seriously in, in these um, sustainability <coughs> issues. But on the same time, uh, this, uh, there is uh, not this kind of urbanization without all, all kind of areas on, in countries uh, and globally. So uh, actually all areas are in, in, uh, somehow uh, included in this pr process of urbanization and sustainability issues uh, are then important from the perspective of all areas. But uh, uh, so any changes uh, uh, then uh, from the perspective of, of urban uh, environment had quite a strong impact uh, through this uh, mega trend of urbanization. And uh, there is a um, need for new kind of uh, urban structures, logistics, uh, um, for instance, for circular and sharing economy. Uh, and then there is uh, issues like uh, transportation and uh, all, all kind of uh, 
issues which are uh, belongs to, to governments, belongs to indivi uh, individual level, also to business level. So uh, how how to uh, uh, give for people's this uh, this kind of environment, en environments where sustainable living is easily possible, and uh, which what what kind of institutions, for instance, could help uh, uh, people to uh, achieve this kind of transformation. So, um, about this uh, uh, land use, for instance, it is uh, uh, important uh, uh, in urban planning uh, and then uh, um, there was uh, also different kind of institutions in mind. They are not now mentioned here, but the cities, for instance, uh, uh, have uh, different kind of institutions which could help uh, uh, people to understand more about how to uh, uh, make possible th this uh, sustainability transformation. The schools, for instance, uh, uh, and then uh, libraries, museums, and these kind of institutions uh, uh, which are, belongs to cities. So these were these uh, four, these kind of uh, areas of activities uh, where there should be uh, some kind of changes in order to reach this uh, uh, transformation towards sustainability. And uh, then the, this uh, fifth one, which is fifth uh, system here, which is uh, kind of base for all of this is uh, environmental commons. Uh, and uh, of course, this is uh, uh, the reason we used to, uh, the human impact is too heavy and we must change it. And how, how to do it is then uh, actually this environmental commons gives kind of borders or should be, should give kind of borders to human activities. Uh, but how, how then to take this in account, uh, for instance, uh, to include uh, uh, these ex externalities in prices uh, or with the help of different kind of market mechanisms, this, this could be done in land use planning. And this is now connected to both urban places, but also then to rural places and to, the, to nature areas. And the idea here is that um, uh, there should be kind of compensation mechanisms. It's something which uh, we recommend, but then also to use this kind of areas primarily where human impact already exists. Uh, and uh, if, if not, then to find this kind of compensation where uh, other uh, nature areas will be safeguarded. And then uh, I would say that uh, even before this kind of um, uh, uh, ideas, how, how to compensate or how to use different kind of ideas, there should be uh, an understanding of how, how, what is the human impact in whatever these, these uh, whatever places, whatever kind of places, uh, if there uh, have been human impact earlier or not. So uh, there is a different kind of levels, how to, uh, which kind of activities there should be and how to understand also this different kind of uh, environmental comments. And this is then also, of course, in business life uh, and uh, in the, uh, by individuals, for, in, for instance, as la landowners. One possibility is to provide compensation services uh, and then regional analysis and, uh, uh, of uh, different kind of land use changes uh, from science point of view is here uh, one possible important action. And then we have this sixth one, the, uh, the last system or path. Uh, and this is then well being and capabilities of human beings. And uh, this is also this kind of um, base. Uh, it, it 
um, in my understanding, these uh, six are in such order that there is this uh, environmental commons as a uh, base, and then uh, human well-being capabilities uh, uh, are the second level of base, and then these four are other uh, path of activities rely on these uh, these two uh, last ones, which are presented here, and. Uh, uh, there is the first the idea that um, uh, without well-being of individuals, tr trust is and trust among uh, people, it is not possible to reach uh, sustainability. So people must uh, have this kind of uh, uh, trust and uh, trust feeling in order to be able to uh, change, for instance, their their. Uh, actions, their, their habits, their, their practices in everyday life and actually these, uh, these kind of everyday life practices uh, have an impact on uh, each of these spheres of activities both in politics, in business, in administration. So uh, in this way this is uh, uh, needed in all, all of these. Uh, and these capabilities are then different kind of knowledges and skills which we have, which could change uh, uh, in such a way that we could be more capable to uh, make uh, this kind of sustainability transformation. And this is then, uh, uh, we all actually need this kind of uh, uh, learning maybe or co-creating, it could be also uh, in my understanding, it is not only to learn new issues, it's, it's also to co-create with other uh, people different kind of new ideas, how to uh, create, for instance, new practices which could be more uh, sustainable than earlier ones. Uh, and one important issue here is then, which is called here with words, reconnecting to nature, uh, the human nature relationship uh, in what kind of form it is now and in what kind of form it should be uh, if we would like to have a more sustainable world. So the idea is not to keep it such but to change it in a way that uh, uh, the understanding of, uh, for instance, this environmental commons uh, is uh, stronger in uh, human minds of all, all of us. So. Education is one uh, form of this, uh, but then also uh, co-learning and uh, these kind of uh, activities uh, are very, very important. And here then uh, we have also here these libraries, museums and NGOs, uh, different kind of forums f uh, for sustainability, which th this could, these kind of institutions could uh, uh, give for people to, for this um, co-learning co or co-creation of, dif of different kind of new understanding, new parts of world views and new uh, practices. Uh, this will be, uh, then could, could give also the different kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, innovative atmosphere to economy and business and uh, for, for different Im Im individuals, communities to create more sustainable nature connection, but also uh, other, other kind of activities. So how to live, how to eat, how to use energies, these are connected to these other paths. Uh, and then science uh, from this perspective is then uh, could be a different kind of uh, this kind of participatory process. Uh, for instance, with uh, these institutions or with, uh, with uh, di different kind of companies or with, with uh, administration to uh, co-create uh, methods and co to co-create different kind of new, uh, new understandings and practices. And then also science uh, could uh, uh, analyze this how uh, people will uh, would uh, um, how people are able to find new capabilities and then also uh, analysis of this well-being of different people and the 
possibilities of people to reach sustainability from this uh, perspective. So these are, are these six uh, paths. Then we have also um, analyzed this kind of uh, steps uh, because uh, these are huge uh, uh, goals uh, or to I I as in interlinked form. So uh, it is good to uh, somehow uh, set different kind of uh, sub goals so to say uh, and interdisciplinary research is here first then uh, it gives to planning different kind of information uh, to use of materials and uh, land use and so, uh, so far is then the third step and uh, fourth step here is then sustainable development as a basis for all decision making and planning and budgeting and uh, in private and pub public life. So challenges for research. Finland has uh, uh, done co quite um, a, a lot con uh, contributed to this kind of uh, research, but th then uh, what uh, could be done is uh, to uh, this kind of um, cooperation with developing countries. This map there shows where uh, this, uh, there is less or where there is more uh, research and uh, this, uh, uh, these are areas where there is uh, this kind of green, it, uh, there is lo most research and for instance if you see Africa there is quite light green colors so uh, to help these areas to uh, develop their own research is, is, could be one really important task in this, these questions. Sustainability science then as a core in, in these activities. Yes, so then actually this question is mostly to you that how could we utilize uh, this work or, of this panel in research to support uh, sustainability transformation. So what are your ideas? Do you feel that this could help you? Uh, and if so, in what way? It could be, would be nice to uh, learn from uh, about your ideas. OK, okay thank, thank you. you. Let's give a hand. All right, does anyone have a direct answer to this question? <laughs> okay, well, maybe clock is, uh, clock is ticking, so maybe we can give the floor to Eija Pouta. And, and if you can present a very briefly your background on sustainability issues and how do you see the work of the panel so far, and maybe we can hear some um, suggestions for the paths that might follow these six paths. Let's hear. Many tasks. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to come and comment uh, this work. I think it's uh, really nice that uh, our scientific community here uh, takes this uh, international uh, challenge and then uh, takes uh, these uh, sustainability questions to our uh, Finnish uh, context. Um, my, uh, my background is uh, in environmental economics and I have been working with ecosystem services and valuing ecosystem services quite a lot and I see uh, many similarities in these two topics. So uh, we have uh, many many targets that uh, link to each other they can be conflicting, they can be supporting each other. Uh, there are always trade-offs. Uh, we need to take into account values. We have uh, lots of information. And uh, in ecosystem services, the aim is uh, to take citizen opinions and values into account and integrate them in decision making. And that's what I see also here in uh, sustainability issues and questions. And 
I think that in this work uh, it has been nicely uh, pointed out that all need to be involved in this uh, discussion and in these decisions. But I see also uh, several challenges in involving uh, regular citizen in these issues because these are really complicated uh, topics and uh, even me, I have difficulties in understanding systemic approach, for example, how these uh, different uh, parts are interlinked, how the systems are interlinked, um, and all the changes we need in our uh, social systems. Sometimes I, I'm <sighs> struggling if we are needing some kind of revolution, is that what we are looking for? Or is it more like stepwise process that uh, researchers are talking about? Uh, and um, what would be uh, important to get uh, citizen involved is to give uh, some kind of understanding about the magnitude of uh, problems we have here in this uh, sustainability field and discussion. We all know that climate change and climate issues, energy issues, they are really important. But uh, how about importance of, of these other, other issues? Uh, it would maybe encourage us to participate. Uh, okay. Mm. Maybe I uh, let other commenters to continue, but, but I would like to thank you for the work and uh, hope that it will find audience and help uh, the dialogue with decision makers. Thank you, Aya. <laughs> Thank you. Very relevant questions. And maybe we can directly hear the comment from Hanna Tuomström Helsus. And if you can also tell a little bit about your background and perspective on the sustainability issues. Yes, uh, I'm Hanna Tuomisto. I'm associate professor in sustainable food systems. So I'm going to comment on um, more about the food uh, issues here. But uh, yeah, first, uh, yeah, I would like to congratulate um, the panel for the work. And uh, also, I found it really uh, excellent that uh, there was this uh, nature connection and the connection to, to food and uh, the food relationship and uh, this kind of value aspects uh, uh, highlighted in the in the report because anyway those uh, values are the basis for everything and uh, and that's where the change uh, starts and uh, uh, so in this uh, food uh, uh, section there was um, a little bit about the agricultural side and maybe more about the uh, consumption but from the agricultural side uh, the agricultural subsidies and uh, taxation uh, were highlighted and how those could be used for for directing agriculture to, to sustainable practices and um, and then uh, there were uh, emphasis on uh, on soil uh, pollinators and also organic farming uh, practices, which uh, are all uh, excellent. But maybe something that I was missing was the uh, novel food production technologies. In Finland, uh, we are very strong at developing novel food production technologies, vertical farming and uh, cell culturing based uh, food. So those are something that uh, we could also, like if, when we develop these technologies, it's something that we can also export elsewhere. And um, then maybe also digital technologies. Uh, so now there is uh, lots of data everywhere and, uh, and uh, it's easier to collect data from farms as well. So then uh, uh, the development of uh, decision support tools for farmers that can help them to to choose uh, sustainable uh, farming practices is also something that uh, in Finland we have uh, 
opportunities to, to work on. And um, vegetarian diets uh, were, um, the promotion of vegetarian diets were mentioned in the report and, uh, and there I would like to emphasize the importance of uh, considering the uh, nutritional aspects also in the communication but also in research that we would uh, have a strong basis for that we know what would be actually uh, sustainable and uh, healthy uh, diets so that uh, we wouldn't uh, uh, promote diets that consumers would just uh, switch to eating vegetarian food but then they would forget to consider the the nutritional aspects and that they get uh, adequate nutrition from those uh, vegetarian diets. And um, then maybe uh, last thing is the, uh, this uh, sustainability assessment method. So of course, uh, like also Eva highlighted that uh, when we have so many uh, sustainable development goals and, uh, and then all of these uh, different uh, sectors as well, so then there are uh, trade-offs as well. So then uh, like we would need uh, better uh, sustainability assessment methods to, to consider all of these social, environmental and economic impacts and then uh, to make a, a, a decision based on these. So yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you, lots of interesting points. For me, especially the, the point on kind of a combination of traditional and, and traditional livelihoods and modern digitalized technology might be an interesting point to take on. But uh, let's have let's hear what uh, Paula Kivima from the Finnish Environment Institute has in mind. Okay, um, thanks. So I'm a research professor in the climate change program at SUKE and my area of research is really um, sustainability transitions or sort of examining socio-technical change, particularly in energy and mobility systems. And first of all, I think um, the panel has really been up for a challenge because the overall the sustainability challenge is so broad and it cuts across so many different sectors of the society. So I think the panel has managed very well to sort of summarize some of the necessary changes into these six parts, which is not an easy task. At the same time, I think whenever you try to summarize and synthesize things, it's also problematic because you might miss some of the important details. Uh, and, and I have some comments on uh, four of the parts that link to my areas of ex expertise. Before that, I'd like to say that I particularly like two aspects that you brought forward. One is the interconnections between the different sectors. Um, and in my area, in the transitions theory, has started talking about the sort of simultaneous change in multiple different socio-technical systems as deep transitions. So this is really what we need, kind of taking into account the inter interconnections, but also then achieving change in these multiple systems. Uh, the other one, which I really liked, was the well-being and capabilities, because it's really the changes about people uh, learning, unlearning previous um, habits and also sort of accepting change, but in a way that it's not forced on them, but they sort of realize the importance. Going to the pathways regarding the sustainable and just economy, I did get a bit of a sense that it was mainly written from the national perspective, even though it's mentioned global issues. Um, and I thought, I, I recently read this article by Benjamin Sovakul and colleagues in Global Environmental Change, and they were trying to introduce this whole systems approach to energy justice in their case, and I found it very useful. So they're basically, basically looking at justice, social justice in three different levels, and it's quite difficult then trying to achieve it because at the same time you're looking at the macro level, so looking at the extractions of minerals and metals and how that globally influences justice between different countries, for example, and the circulation of waste flows. Uh, the measure level, which is the national level, how, for example, increasing electricity prices or unequal access to low carbon technology, so some people are more able to afford electric cars and solar panels. And then you have the micro level, so when we do these changes, what are the changes, impacts on local uh, family livelihoods, community health and environments, and I think that might be a very useful lens in future work. Um, regarding energy, 
I think the globally unfolding energy transition has several key features. So you've got the electrification, so increasingly heat, for ex heat and mobility are produced from electricity, but also the digital digitalization, which was al also mentioned in terms of food, and it would be interesting to explore how what implications this has. You have the decentralization of production, act more active prosumers and communities and energy producers. You've obviously got the increase in renewable energy, fossil fuel phase out and various social issues such as um, changes in employment, uh, access and cost of energy and so on. And I thought it would be interesting to get more detail thinking how these different features of the global energy transition impact the sustainability and, and the pathways because it's, it's not just about the renewable energy but there's so many other things involved. Uh, third path was the cities and city regions, um, and I certainly agree that cities are, and are in increasingly important actors with concrete impacts on, on people's day-to-day -day lives and creating basically the infrastructure within which we try to make changes. What I was maybe missing was mobility, either as its own path or connected to cities more expensive. Uh, more explicitly, so when we think of their, obviously there are new patterns of working, but also studying remote university courses, but then you also, we also have flexible mobility services, for example, uh, Mars in Finland, and I felt this mobility wasn't really explicit el anywhere in the pathways. Um, so, and finally, I'd like to say that um, I think transitions, even though they are enabled by technological changes, are really about making permanent or at least semi-permanent changes in rules and practices and it's really about dismantling existing unsustainable practices and I really liked in places of the publication where really the practices and, and, the, and the people were visible in many parts such as the economy, food and cities and maybe not so much in the energy. So I wondered this sort of idea of active energy consumers and producers could maybe be added. Um, I'd like to just end by asking this question of how these six parts connect to this idea of destabilization or dismantling the old system at the same time as we, uh, and especially of existing practices. I, is it a separate path or how, do, how, does it, how is it intertwined with the six others? But yeah, thank you for giving me a lot of food for thoughts. Thanks, Paula. Um, maybe I can ask Eva and Katrina if you can please come forward here. And if anyone at the audience has any further questions, we will be happy to hear. Maybe if you can think about questions, if Eva or Katrina has any comments on, on these previous uh, commentary, commentaries. Maybe you can take that uh, microphone there. Maybe I could, if this, I hope this is on now, <laughs> but maybe I could uh, give a, one answer to this uh, Paula's last question now, this, uh, how to, sorry, is, is this on? No? Okay, now it is. So to uh, try to answer the, to this uh, uh, last question about uh, how to unlearn the different kind of issues. So, so uh, I think uh, in this um, co-creation, there is, it is both to uh, learn new issues, but also to leave uh, such issues which are not anymore good ones. So it is somehow uh, included in this co-creation processes and uh, then uh, to learn new issues is o only one part of this kind of uh, cap capacity building so to say uh, among human beings so this is how I said now then then this active part of uh, different kind different individuals on individual level because learning and uh, unlearning they are basically individual issues but we are doing them together with each other also, so to support from others is important. But the, uh, the, the, this kind of uh, will to do it 
uh, is needed, and then uh, this kind of creative process is the most important, I think, there. Yeah, just thank you to all. I think all the comments were really good, and what I really felt was that uh, doing such a short report is very difficult to include everything, and, and I think uh, uh, many of the comments were interesting, especially on the food side, about the kind of mm, more forward-going technologies and so forth. I suppose we kind of included them, but they didn't, they didn't become evident. We had them as a basis, but they maybe didn't come out. The other thing that was mentioned about the food that Hanna brought up was this uh, issue of health and the connection to health. I think we actually had this very str strongly, but uh, on the contrary, we didn't, we felt that the society has already passed this phase that uh, sustainable food or uh, vegetarian food would have would be risky from the health perspective. We saw it's vice versa, and we tried to, in a well, way, bring forth the idea that actually the sustainable food is also uh, promoting uh, health. Uh, but of course, there is. Uh, you always need to re remind about the issue that that we, ne we need to ensure the connection. Yeah, maybe uh, what I meant with that comment was that um, like if uh, people just switch to completely vegan diets so that uh, they remember that there are certain things that uh, so you cannot just uh, mm. replace beef with uh, yeah. beans or mm. something like that so then yeah of course in vegetarian diets there are no problems but then like if people switch completely to plant-based uh, diets then they need to remember um, mm. to ensure the intake of uh, vitamin b12 and uh, vitamin d and calcium and this kind of thing so so that what we need is a more kind of education to explain to people how to uh, switch to plant-based diets in a in a uh, healthy way. Yeah, and I think that's that's really important, and that's why, uh, yes, especially in Finland, when we are in a way pushing the behavioral change on the food uh, behavior through our public, public kitchens, because that is something that is very important in Finland at schools and school places. So uh, to ensure that, for example, children that are in growing age, that the food there is nutritious, what they get. So valid point. OK. Yeah, thank you very much for the inspiration and, uh, of the whole work, which we've, some of us have followed <laughs> for a while. Um, what I thought of during your presentations was the sort of uh, friction that we have with the more economic arguments of that there are already investments in place on some quite unsustainable practices. But some of these investments might then um, come to an, uh, be used up in 10 years or 20 years. That, and then there is still like a, a need for more dramatic transition that did you in the process of, of working on this, how how did you weigh these things of running down particular investments? Like in Finland, we could think of peat, that we have some peat production. It is very politicized and there is, or in the vegan diets, there is this assumption that now we kill all the cows or, or like that it gets politicized in a way like the transition would happen immediately. But some of those cows will come to an end of their lifespan and some of those barns where they ha that have been super modern five years ago in 15 years they are not modern anymore and the investment has in a way been used up that how did you deal with looking at this sort of economic turnovers in the transition and we didn't talk only about in the economic ones but in the instruments as a whole when we are talking about sustainability and we know the interlinkages we d shouldn't go from one extreme to the other because it doesn't really lead us anywhere but uh, that it would be the transition would be sustainable which means that we gradually 
take down the ones that have uh, that are seen as unsustainable and at the same time we gradually increase the support and the economic support to the more sustainable ways and also by measuring the economic progress we saw that it's really important that we don't in a way for example say that the GDP is somehow bad but we should take something on the side of it so that we can actually together evaluate and, and make, make it more visible what is happening in our society where does our well-being actually where does it build from so we are in a way that is the issue of sustainability that you all the time take into account the different views and, and try to find an optimum uh, sort of gradual change, even though we have to, we need to do things fairly fast. But we see that we get faster if we are more sort of conscious about these things. We are running out of time, but we'll be really fast. And I'll take one, one more question. <laughs> Irina Herzona, agroecology lecturer. Well, this is kind of work that provokes more questions than gives, I think, because this endless thing of discussing it. Um, I felt that perhaps it would be even stronger work if you started with social part, because this is the basis, you know, well-being of humans in the long term. This is why it is being done. But you start with economics, and that sends a different message. The economics. You, you see my point. Yeah. You start with the positive, why we're doing it, and that it's mm. actually improving our life mm. in the long term, and you know we have to change the culture. And then economics is just one way of doing it. But yes, you see this my point. Is, uh, yeah, yes, I can see it, and I, actually I think uh, that the, the first issue is this uh, environmental commons, and then the second is uh, uh, well-being of human being because we. Uh, cannot have a well-being of human being without of well-being of uh, this nature. So, but uh, uh, then there is the kind of instrumental view in, in this uh, um, publication now, and that's the reason why we started from uh, these uh, four others, uh, because they are something we should, uh, what we should do. Uh, and uh, then, yeah, but I, I, can, I can see your point. We, we could do it uh, vice versa to tell why uh, more strongly and then how. Now we started from how and then told why. Okay, maybe we can have one more question before <laughs> closing the official part of, of this uh, seminar. team for the very good work. I'm from India, so a very highly populated country <laughs> and a rich country and slowly we are at the crossroads of development and conservation. So uh, f from the experience of my country, what I feel is like in continuation with what she felt in the food thing, I mean the traditional thing, I f find most of our traditions were conservative and in a way conserving the nature, not only food. So in that way, when we are taking up it as a research, so documenting our old traditional knowledge, not only for food, but for many other things, will uh, give certain answers when we look at it as a research. And in the research, it's a very good thing. You're already involving the politicians in the Finland. So I find it as a triangle. One is the politicians who are deciding the policy, and the other is the stakeholders of all the citizens, if they are informed, if they feel they are connected. So all these three things. One is making the people involved with the decisions. Right now, I find it's not so in many countries. So that's what she what she said, starting from the well-being of the people. So that triangle, some way, if we can find more connection, and it's a really a good thing. You want to also spread this to other countries. So wish you all the best. I I could just uh, comment that that it's really important to value this kind of uh, knowledge also, which is. Uh, 
the uh, earlier knowledge it has been also in in Finland in Western world it, it is in many parts of world nowadays also uh, and uh, to actually what I have been thinking more more and more now recently is uh, uh, the value which we give to the different kind of habits and different kind of technologies and uh, uh, I think this kind of research and this kind of uh, Understanding uh, in science, for instance, could be really important in uh, enhancing the sustainability. On the same time, then uh, uh, there is knowledge about uh, different kind of traditional uh, practices which are not so ecological. So it, they are not all good ones from eco ecological point of view. So we need also uh, research which uh, somehow can solve this, which kind of yeah exactly yes and to uh, then create new kind of issues on based of this because we are living now in a different kind of world so we cannot jump back to past we must find new ways no, i was also going to say that it's a combination and that's why it's so fascinating this time that we need to in a way take certain issues and learn from the, the history and from the past and from the indigenous peoples and local knowledge and then on the other hand we need to uh, acknowledge that we are soon 10 billion people in the world and we can't implement all, all the issues that we have had earlier and then use the modern technology that we have and that's why it's so interesting where we need to bring these two together just quickly please well congratulations for the framework um regarding the well-being uh, we know it's deeply related with all the values and life expectancies and that is really related with culture so Finland now is having more interculturality how do you plan to integrate different like uh, world perspectives in this part of well-being uh, well to take into account all the inclusivity of diversity yeah Actually, I, I would say that as, as I studied it, or the last part of my part of the talk, I mentioned that this is a kind of Finnish interpretation of the global report. And if you're not familiar with the global report, I suggest that you have a look, because that is the one that takes into account the, the whole variation of the world and, and tries in into in a way show that actually there's a lot in common with all the countries but we need to implement this framework of the six systems and the four levers in di different ways because countries are in different situations and their cultural perspectives are very different as you mentioned i, I could add uh, that uh, uh, it is uh, also really important to uh, have the, in, for instance, in Finland or maybe everywhere on our globe, with this kind of more inclusiveness for all kind of ideas, all kind of people. So that's the uh, core of this uh, to understand and value different kind of ideas, different kind of technologies. Okay, at this point, I must say that it's always like this when you talk about sustainability issues that there are lots of perspectives that just pop up and the discussion is obviously endless but uh, as we have passed our official time here maybe we can stop this part and uh, continue the discussion perhaps at the lobby there is some coffee there if you have additional questions we are happy to answer but at this point i wish to thank you all the participants and all the presenters and audience and wish you a nice sunny afternoon thank you <laughs>